Can our beaches survive sea level rise? This is the University of the Netherlands. New Orleans, the Netherlands, and the Philippines. They're all examples of these low-lying coastal areas, making them very vulnerable to flooding from the sea. So given climate change and the expected sea level rise and changes in storm conditions uh, that this will bring, it is now more important than ever to, uh, to, well, to protect these areas from, uh, from sea level rise. And many of these areas, they happen to be surrounded by uh, sandy coasts with wide beaches and high dunes. And um, do you realize that these beaches and dunes, they form a first line of defense against, well, flooding from the sea? So all of this sand, it forms a natural buffer against, well, whatever the sea uh, decides to throw at us. You've probably been to a few beaches before, and, or maybe you've noticed that uh, beaches have a lot of features in common, right? So let's have a look at a, a slice of the beach or a cross your profile of the beach. And as we walk from land to sea, we first see the, the dunes, and they're often covered in, in plants or some sort of uh, vegetation. As we walk down the dunes, we get onto the beach, so that's the dry and the flat area where you probably spend most of your time on the beach. And then we get closer to the sea. You might see that there are some, some lower areas and some higher areas, or these heaps of sand, basically, these really big heaps with uh, channels or uh, small pools alongside them. And they're known as troughs, the, the pools. And the higher areas are known as sandbars. As we go into the sea, so now underwater, we also see these sandbars or these heaps of sand. Are there any surfers in the room? Or anyone who likes to surf in the room? Oh, one. <laughs> well, you might be getting a bit excited now hearing about sandbars, but uh, we'll get back to that in a moment, why surfers should be uh, getting excited about this. So, this is a static view of the beach, but the beach is actually a very dynamic environment, and sand is constantly moving back and forth between the dunes and the beach and the sea. Now, in such a dynamic environment, it, it helps to, to keep this basic thing in mind, that if you have an area where there's more sand coming in than there's going out, this area will grow. And if there's more sand going out of this area than there's coming in, then the beach will erode, so it will disappear. Now, I'm a coastal researcher, and basically I focus on uh, how the sand gets from the sea to the beach, and when it is washed away to sea again during storms. And in this lecture, I want to tell you something about uh, well, how the sand moves around and the role that waves play in this moving around of sand. So if we want to know if a beach can survive sea level rise, we want to know how does the beach grow? And why doesn't the beach wash away entirely during storms? And maybe this is something we can expect uh, in the future. Sandbars, they happen to be uh, key players in this back and forth movement of sand from and to the beach. So what are these sandbars? Let's have a, look at, a closer look at these sandbars. Well, as you can see in this diagram, they're basically heaps of sand in the sea. And this is one cross section. But if we look along the whole beach, it's basically this elongated heap of sand all along the beach, so it's this, it creates this shallow area in front of the beach. Now, besides studying these sandbars and beach dynamics from a scientific point of view, I also have a, well, a more personal drive to, uh, to investigate these sandbars, and that's that I like to surf. And as a surfer, you're always looking for the, the spot where the waves break best. And on top of these sandbars, they're always wave breaking, so that's why you always have surfers hanging around over these sandbars waiting for the waves uh, to break. And these sandbars, just like the rest of the beach, they're very dynamic features. So during a storm, they get moved towards the sea, under the larger waves. And then during calm conditions, the sandbars move slowly back to the beach again, and eventually they may become part of the beach as they weld uh, to the shore. The direction of sand movement, or the direction of the sandbar movement, depends on the intensity of wave breaking. Now, how does this mechanism work? Let's uh, first look at storms. During storms, we have big waves, strong currents, uh, which move, move the water around, and also we have a really high water level. And this high water level allows the sea and the waves to attack the dunes. And within a matter of hours, lots of sand may wash away from the dunes onto the beach, and it may cause, well, a huge scarp in your dune, or it will wash away a huge part of your dune. And if the storm lasts long enough, or if it's really powerful, the storm, then the sand will get mo moved even further from the beach into the sea. So should we consider this sand as lost? gone to sea and never coming back? Well, temporarily at least, we see that you know, most beaches and dunes, they do recover, and we know when they recover, but we're not quite sure how they recover. So when do beach re beaches recover? During calm weather. 
During calm weather, we have wave breaking in some areas of the beach, and we don't have these strong currents anymore, which we have during storms. We have a different mechanism working here. During calm weather, below each wave, the, the wave nudges the sand gently towards the beach. So this is a much more gradual process, and it needs more time for the sand to get back to the beach. And this is also the process which drives the sandbar back to the beach. So eventually, after enough time, and if there are no storms in between, you know, moving the sandbar back to sea, then the sandbar might become, become part of the beach again, allowing the beach to grow. You might realize now that beaches are really dynamic environments, and uh, yeah, we have these features which move around in time because of the sand which is moving around. So you know what? Let's go to the beach and have a look what it really looks like. So here we are on the Dutch beach, and this is actually a very nice example of a sandy coast. And we're standing here on top of this high dune. It's about 20 meters high, and this forms the first line of defense against the sea level, should it rise. And as you can see, this dune is completely covered in these plants. And these plants help capture the sand, which is blown from below from the beach into these dunes, and it helps the dunes grow. As I just mentioned in the lecture, the front of the dune is the most dynamic part of the dune. And it's here where during storms, waves can reach the dune and erode the dune, as we see over here. So we see the steeper part of the dune where the sand has been washed away. And here we also see the plants that we saw on top of the dune. And because the sand has been washed away, we can see that they actually have really long roots of about a meter long. And they're sticking out the sand here now. And during erosion, they help fixate the sand. So during calmer conditions, when we don't have so many storms, then uh, the wind has the chance to blow the sand from the beach towards the dunes. And then here these new baby dunes develop, which actually lie in front of the larger dunes, which we were just on top of. So they actually protect the larger dunes from erosion. So during the next big storm, these new baby dunes are the first to get washed away, and that can happen within a day. So as we get closer to the water's edge, we see these higher areas in the beach. And these heaps of sand are the sandbars that I was talking about. So here on the left side, you see the sea. And on the right side, you see this pool of water, which is the trough of the sandbar, which is now filled up with water. And in summertime, when this water is nice and warm, you see lots of children playing in it. So this particular sandbar has become part of the beach. But later on, when the storm, storms come and larger waves cover the sandbar again, it gets moved back towards the sea. So if we now look out to sea, we can see that there are waves breaking and they create these white areas on the water surface. And we can follow these white areas all along the coast, creating these white lines of wave breaking. And we know that beneath these white areas, we have sandbars stretching all along the coast. So now when you go to the beach, take a good look around before you spread your towel on the sand because next time it may look completely different. Okay, so in this video I just showed that uh, wave breaking all along the beach indicates that we have sandbars running all along the beach as well. But sometimes there may be gaps in this wave breaking or darker areas where there are no waves breaking. And these darker areas correspond to deeper areas in the sandbar or where the sandbar has gone missing, basically. And these gaps in the sandbar, they have a function because they allow the, the water, which uh, piles up at the shoreline basically because of waves breaking, it allows the water to flush back into the sea. And you will probably know them as rip currents. Now rip currents, they can be quite dangerous if you're not aware, well, of, how, of their presence. So let's take a look at how that works. So when waves approach these sandbars, they break over the sandbars, and this causes the water to pile up at the shoreline and this water has to go somewhere. So it goes to the side until it basically meets another current which is going to the, this, to the side and they bump into each other and get deflected seaward, creating this rip current or this channel through the sandbar. So this rip channel can take you into sea for, well, quite a distance. And, uh, well, what should you do if you get stuck in one? Firstly, don't panic. It won't pull you under. It's just going to take you out to sea a little bit. And then you can either do, well, you can either swim along the beach towards the areas of wave breaking, and these breaking waves will take you back to the beach. Or if you don't feel confident enough to swim towards this area, you just float and uh, sign for help, which is probably a safer option. Um, so 
these rip currents are part of a circulation pattern. So we have the water flowing seaward through this rip current, but at the same time, we have this current going over the sandbar, which is directed landward. And it's this current which is slowly pushing the sandbar towards the beach. Now, instead of waiting for this sandbar to slowly move towards the beach and become part of the beach again, uh, we also see that sometimes part of this bar may break off and, well, move towards the beach much faster than a whole sandbar would do. So we know that during a storm, these sandbars are driven towards the sea or seaward. But what may happen is that a small part of this bar may break off and during calmer weather, it can move towards the beach. And this speeds up the process of the, 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 the recovery of a, of a beach after a storm. So this is only one of the mechanisms that helps speed up this recovery. Now, we get to, our, get to my question, can our beaches survive sea level rise? Well, we've now seen that the beach is a very dynamic place and sand is constantly moving moving back and forth to and from the beach, depending on what the sea throws at it. So basically the question is, uh, if the sea starts throwing something else at the beach, what will happen to the balance of this give and take of sand? Well, as long as the total balance of sand stays the same, so if there's the same amount of sand going in as there is coming out, then our beaches will remain as well. So what this means is if our beaches can recover from a storm in the future predictions of, uh, of climate change, then our beaches will survive. But sea level rise and storm conditions are not the only thing which determine whether our beaches will survive. It's also determined by the, the way that we, humans, decide to manage our, our sand in our coastal systems. So if we understand the natural processes that, uh, that work within a sandy system, then we can stimulate these natural processes to, uh, well, to get more resilient coasts and more resilient uh, lines of defense while enjoying a day at the beach uh, at our favorite beach. Thank you.